they also will be considering termination of all special districts that were enacted in Florida prior to 1968, and that includes the Reedy Creek Improvement District. Special session of the Florida State Legislature continues. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis there, as you saw, carrying out an official act as governor, perhaps also the unofficial launch of his 2024 presidential campaign as culture warrior in chief. Walt Disney runs Disney World, essentially as its own kingdom in Florida. And as you heard, Ron DeSantis wants to take that away because Disney declared war on DeSantis's parental rights bill. It goes back to a 1967 law that essentially created municipal government run by Disney. They have their own board of supervisors, their own zoning rules, their own police force, their own fire department. Under the law, quite literally, the mouse runs the house. Status is invaluable to Disney, to Walt Disney Company. You'll remember Disney announced plans to increase representation of the LGBTQIA plus community within the park and in their cartoons after Governor DeSantis introduced a law that would change how teachers can discuss sexual orientation in elementary schools. Critics called the proposal, and we put it in air quotes, the don't say gay law, because the law doesn't actually use any of those words. We'll read what you what the law says. Classroom instruction on sexual orientation or gender identity may not occur in kindergarten through grade three, or in a manner that is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate for students. Florida is now ground zero of the culture war, pitting conservatives against the LGBTQIA plus supporters. You may think of this as a 12 round heavyweight fight between Disney, as you can see there in the red shorts, and Ron DeSantis in the dark suit. Even the White House is taking sides. Here's Press Secretary John Psaki today on the News Not Noise podcast. I'm going to get emotional about this issue because it's just, it's horrible. But, uh, but you know, it's, it's like kids who are bullied. And they, they just, like all these leaders are, are taking steps to hurt them and hurt their lives and hurt their families. And you look at some of these laws in these states and it is going after parents who are in loving relationships, who have kids. It's completely outrageous. And people complain that Kyle Rittenhouse had crocodile tears. But that aside, radio personality Tony Katz with us now, author of Let's Go Bourbon. I get how this is good for Ron DeSantis politically on the national stage. It gets the national media talking about him once again because he, he can't do what Greg Abbott is doing on the border. Is it good for Florida? Well, I, I got to think we got to go back just a, a little bit. Uh, but to answer the quick question, good for Florida or good for Florida parents who want to engage this fight that's been going on in their schools and in culture. And we should be clear, it is a culture war. I, I don't think there's anything really wrong with that. What, what Jen Psaki is saying there, and I have no doubt that she's actually emotional. What about all the parents of young girls who are told they have to take second place, third place, fourth place because a boy decided they're a girl and is now competing? What about all oh, of those oh, parents oh, oh, oh. of the swimmers? Tony, there's, there's two different issues here. There's one, Ron DeSantis's bill, which is now law in Florida. That's on one side of this. But the next is then going after Disney and trying to revoke their tax status. 2019 study, tourism directly or indirectly related to Disney. 41% of the Orlando region's workforce. Disney alone employed 80,000 workers. Tourism generated 5.8 billion in local and state taxes in 2018. Does picking a fight with Disney because they pick, because they're gonna lobby against DeSantis's bill, how does that help anybody in Florida economically? First things first, I don't appreciate Jen Psaki lying about the legislation, saying that somehow this is an attack on children when parents are simply standing up in many cases for their children. It's wrong for her to do so. And I mentioned those parents of swimmers as just an example. Now the question is whether or not this is smart policy from Ron DeSantis. Disney said, we're going to do everything in our power to overturn this. We're going to do everything we can. We're going to put the full resources of Disney behind this. And the governor is listening to constituents saying, 
wait a second, Disney doesn't get to decide our policy. They're going to put billions of dollars in. Elon Musk can't buy Twitter because it's the end of free speech. But Disney is allowed to try and pressure politicos with tons of dollars that we parents are spending to watch Disney products. And that's OK. So that's what I believe Ron DeSantis is pushing back against. Mm -hmm. I believe he absolutely has a mandate from a tremendous amount of the Florida population, never mind a lot of people around the country. And I don't think that Disney gets to say, well, we're supposed to get these wonderful breaks as if somehow that's an acceptable uh, kind of just conclusion to the conversation. It's amazing to watch the progressive left now be all in favor of corporations getting special benefits. Yeah, no, and now all of a sudden it flips around. It is amazing right. how, as you go all the way down or all the way up on the on the spectrum, uh, how the hypocrisy continues, right? It's all of a sudden we saw that the progressive left didn't care about climate change and Elon Musk when he threatened to take over Twitter. You get to the core point of power, and, and there you go. Trafalgar Group polling of Disney fans' impact on the company changes. 68% less likely to do business with the company, 9% more likely to do business with the company, 22% no difference. You think that 68% number is real? Are there going to actually be parents who don't buy Cinderella dolls because of this? I think that's the key question, man. And and I have been saying on my, on my radio shows here in Indianapolis and, and around the country that I, I have a hard time believing that people in the main or or in, in in total are going to do away with engaging with Disney somehow. But there are parents who are very very disgusted by what it is they're seeing. When we talk about those those leaked videos, for example, from Disney executives, and you hear someone, an executive producer, talking about the not so secret gay agenda, this is where another part. Part of the ridiculousness comes from. This isn't about that. This is about Disney deciding that somehow they know what's good and righteous and decent and thinking that they can threaten or abuse or intimidate Floridians. And Floridians are saying no to that. I also must take umbrage to the ideas you were talking about, the LGBTQIA+. There are a lot of letters in there, and sometimes it changes, and I personally can't keep up uh, hey, with I, it. I just read what, what's on the teleprompter. Think, I just read what's on the teleprompter. I, and you do it, and you do a beautiful thank job you, of it. But what makes us think that everybody who's gay somehow is okay with the idea that we should be sexualizing second graders and teaching them gender identity? I think that's an absolutely horrific position for people to take, lumping everybody in together. I'm willing to bet you all the money in my pocket versus all the money in your pocket, and you probably have more money in your pocket, and that there are plenty of gay Americans who don't think that this is right, yet somehow okay, they're lumped okay. into it. I, 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 I get the. I get the point there. We'll bring it back to where we started, which is Ron DeSantis. Yeah. It works well, obviously, for the cultural war that is going to exist in Florida for his reelection campaign. It works well to set him up for 2024. Are we to believe that right now in America that the conversation for the presidential race is going to be dominated much more by the culture war than by policy, economic or otherwise? I would say that there's, well, oh, oh, oh. Okay, now now I understand the question. No, no, no. Inflation is top line, man. Inflation, the cost of gas, not being able to find milk on the shelves, that's the top line, unquestionably, no doubt about it. But when we say culture war, and again, I don't mind the, the term culture war, I'm fine with it. This is about whether or not parents get respected and parents have a say in their kids' mm -hmm. lives. That is the subject, no matter what, on the political left, you may hear whether it be Jen Psaki or some other I, uh, cable it, news host. So no, you, it you, wasn't that... No, you, yeah, I, I, I got to run. I was just going to say, you pointed out very well about the parents' war. Glenn Youngkin proved that, and you talked about it long, long before uh, most folks were about it in Virginia. Tony, good to see you. Thank you. Always, man. Good to see you. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.